Starting this fabulous Friday with cricket, the West Indies are one down in their three-match one-day international series against Australia after suffering a comprehensive eight-wicket defeat at the Melbourne Cricket Ground on Friday morning Caribbean time. The West Indies managed to crawl to a respectable 231 before Australia eased to 232 for two. Gerard Morrisili has the recap. West Indies looking to follow up their monumental test victory with a good performance in the first ODI against Australia at the MCG. But they soon realized it was a different format. Debutant Xavier Bartlett on fire, picking up Graves and Alec Athenes to leave the Caribbean side at 2 for 17. And he picks up another. Gee, that is good bowling. That's the away swinger, the genuine in swinger. Now the away swinger. That is very, very skillful. A lot rested on Shea Hope's shoulders, but an uncharacteristically loose drive was his demise, giving Bartlett his third. West Indies 3 for 37 and 22 runs later, Kevin Hodge drove to mid on. Cameron Green with the wicket, substitute Mackenzie Harvey with the catch. West Indies needed stability, and Casey Carty and Roston Chase provided it, as both scored half centuries in a 110 run fifth wicket partnership. Carty, who batted at three, was first to his milestone. And he manages to sneak through, does Casey Carty, to bring up 50 at the MCG. His third in one day international cricket, his second in a row. He's kept things going for the West Indies with wickets falling around him early. Well batted. And Chase followed shortly after. Quicker one. And Chase seizes on it. Away through mid-wicket. Fine shot and a fine 50. His first one day international against Australia. He brings up a half century. He's fourth in the format. And it's a great partnership now that's worked 96 between him and Carty. But Adam Zampa broke the partnership, getting rid of Chase with a score on five for 169. And then Carty's demise came via the runout route. The right hander producing a career best 88 of 108 deliveries, which included six fours and a two sixes and from six for 193 the west indies added a further 38 runs before being dismissed for 231 in 48.4 overs bartlett the pick of the aussie bowlers with a player of the match performance of a four for 17. west indies needed early wickets if they were to stand a chance of defending 232 and they got one matthew ford nicking off the out of form travis head for four but his opening partner josh english was brutal, smashing boundaries all around the park. The 28-year-old wicketkeeper batsman brought up his half-century in just 28 deliveries behind eight fours and a six. His dismissal for 65 came one over after the power play thanks to review. The score, two for 83. But that was the last bit of success for the Windies as Cam Green and Steve Smith took the game away from the Caribbean side completely. The two right-handers crunched an unbeaten third-wicket partnership of 149. Smith topped scoring with 79, while Green ended on 77 to propel the Aussies to two for 232 as they won with 11 overs and a three deliveries to spare. Obviously, if starting a, a tour like that, um, you would want to take the first win, but unfortunately, we got to go back to the drawing board now. Uh, we've still got two more games to go, so we've got some room to, to improve. As you see, we, we lost too many wickets in the power play. Uh, we didn't, I didn't think we showed as much intent as we, we needed to at the, the beginning of the innings. I think that would obviously put their bowlers, or at least change their mindset in terms of where, where they need to bowl at us. Uh, we probably need to show a bit more intent and just be up for the fight, man. Yeah, there you have it from the West Indies captain, Shea Hope, to end that report from Gerard Morrisili. Um, before I even get Faz in on this discussion, I have to speak about one major disappointment that I have with this West Indies 50 over side. They didn't bat 50 overs, and we see it so often with this team. And you're going to hear it from me a lot because every time we don't bat 50 overs, I will bring it up on this show. Fazir Mohammed is standing by to chat with us about this first one day international. Faz, how are you doing? 
not too bad. Well, I don't know what is your issue. And the same way that my issue is always the amount of cricket played by the big nations within the long series compared to what the West Indies and other minor nations are left to play. So now I, I know where we stand. <laughs> well, there you go, Faz. Fantastic. Um, how would you assess this first one-day international? West Indies dominated? Comprehensively outplayed, but contributed to their own demise. And I think the captain alluded to it. Too many wickets lost early on. But it's not just the wickets lost, Ricardo, but it's the manner in which they were lost. I mean, Justin Gray's really couldn't do much about that delivery that got it. Beautiful delivery from the debutant Bartlett. But look at the dismissal of the captain and before that, Alec Athanase. Athanase driving through the offside, feet on leg stump. Obviously, you're not going to middle it, edging through. And then uncharacteristically, the, the shot played by Shea Hope. You hardly ever see him playing a shot like that. He's losing his balance completely. The, the back foot is swinging towards leg, even as he's trying to, to force that off drive, which is totally uncharacteristic, as if maybe he felt it necessary to try to dominate the bowlers and, and made a gift of his wicket. And then, of course, the run out of Casey Carty. As we look at that, watch at that shot, and look where his back foot is going. Uh, and really launching at the, at, the, at the delivery, which is, again, not what you would associate with him because he usually is probably the one of the best exponents of the cover drive, and it didn't happen this time around. And, and after that very good partnership between Casey Carty and Roston Chase, we saw that needless run out of Carty. So, uh, again, Australia were, were always going to have that total well within range, but you look at that dismissal again, and you just add to the tally of dismissals in which the West Indies didn't have their own course. Yeah, and it started from the top order, Faz, the top order collapsing. Alec Ateniz, he did not fire in the test, of course, in our pre-match preview here on the Sportsmax Zone. We said, OK, he didn't fire in the test. That's all right. He's really good where ODI is concerned, you know. We spoke to Nikhil about it and we said, you know, we were expecting Alec Ateniz to perform in the ODIs. It's only one match, but I'm going to ask you the question, do you expect to see him in the second match? I do. I, I think he's a quality player. I, I think he's someone. And we saw that from his first test match, never mind the heavy defeat suffered by the West Indies in his native Dominica. We saw a player who has quality. Of course, he started his, his one day career with a half century against the UAE, which uh, is really a lightly guarded, regarded opposition. But I think he is someone who needs to recognize that he has the ability, but must bring cricketing sense to his shot making. In the same way that I made the point during the, the course of our discussion about the two test matches, that is not good enough to get to 30 odd, 40 odd, even getting just past 50, and then mentally relaxing. You're talking about elite level, and the West Indies are a long, long way from elite level. 232 is never going to cut it, one. Secondly, you're playing against the world champions. So you know even if they've rested their top players, the, the next set, they are keen, they are desperate to perform. They're going to give it everything. So you've got to expect that. You've got, he's, he's been in Australia long enough to know the pace, the bounce, and so on. And that's why I was disappointed in the way he got out. Feet planted on leg stump, driving through the offside and edging to the slips. That, that, that's, that's a fundamental error. Yeah, for sure. We really have to commend, though, Casey Carty and Roston Chase for how they were able to steady the ship and ensure that, you know, at least we got to some sort of respectable total. That 88 runs from Casey Carty, it comprised of two sixes and six fours, and then we had Roston Chase chipping in with 59. Your assessment, Faz, of how they went about business. An important partnership, a very good partnership. Uh, of course, again, it's, it, it, we're comparing with the elites. We can't fool ourselves and say, well, you know, we're only comparing with the middle of the road. If the West Indies want to improve, that's who you have to compare yourselves with in the same way you compare yourselves with Usain Bolt's 9.58, as unreachable as it may seem to, to, to many in the sprinting game. The point is that Yes, it's a good partnership. It steadied the West Indies innings. It pushed them forward. But 
they've got to learn as time goes on, as the West Indies start to rebuild towards qualification for the 2027 World Cup, that you've also got to be able to up the pace because 232, 240, 250 doesn't cut it anymore. It's certainly not in Australia. Big grounds, you don't have to get many boundaries, but they, they can run you ragged by getting twos and threes and even an all run four, depending on where it goes in the outfield. So it's important, yes, to get these runs. As we see him raising the bat, then the pity that he wasn't able to go on to get 100 with that run out. And, and really, the error there was from Hayden Walsh calling him through for a non existent single. But it's, it's, it's a difficult challenge. We know that. We're not pretending that it's easy, that it can be easily done. But as I said, if you're comparing yourselves with the very best in the format, you've got to recognize that even as you're stabilizing, even as you're consolidating, there has to be a level of acceleration that requires both confidence, skill, and competence. Yeah, Faz, you just referenced something that we had discussed when we were previewing the series, the fact that because of the depth of Australian cricket, their fringe players are likely to be hitting the ground running. Uh, Xavier Bartlett was outstanding last night. How impressed were you with the 25-year-old? Very impressed, but, but again, not surprised. And, and as you said it, Lance, it's the, the same situation as in the great Haiti of the West Indies, where the second string players, as happened with the Karipaka hiatus, were able to compete with their opponents, were able to go away from home and fight very hard against India, uh, who had their, their full-strength team. The point I'm making and that, that you were, were alluding to is that it's a very competitive environment in Australia. There are a lot of openers sitting down in Australia wondering why did they choose Steve Smith in, in, instead of one of them. And now we know after that, 91 not out, even though it was in a losing effort at the Gabba. So here you have these younger fast bowlers, or the not so young, like Sean Abbott, who many will recall was unfortunately the bowler who was in, in action when Philip Hughes sadly died in 2014 with a, a really freak situation. And, and it took him quite some time to recover emotionally from that, which you could fully understand. So again, you've got players at different stages in their careers, but all desperate to fill the boots of the likes of Cummins, Stark, and Hazelwood. Yeah. And Faz, I want to mention something quickly here, because I'm a little tired of some of these cliches here when, you know, people are talking sporty here about ticking boxes and small margins. But <laughs> in referencing some points, you, you're forced to make them. And the small margin is the one I want to talk about now, because you said it earlier on. The, I would have to call it a brain freeze with Hayden Walsh taking that single, punching the ball firmly to short mid-wicket. The feeler wasn't deep, short mid-wicket, and took off for a single. And it speaks to small margins, just moments of doing the wrong things. Because I suspect that if that didn't happen and Carty went on to make 100, he'd probably have quickened his strike rate after that. And, you know, he could have scored a big 100 and given the Australians something better to chase. Having seen the run chase, it seems evident that the Aussies might still have won. But certainly, that, for me, was the most disappointing moment of the night. Indeed, and, and, and that's the point, Lance, you know, because we always pointed to, to these things and say what could have been. And, and, and generally, as, as we, we often hear the discussion in tennis, there really isn't much difference as far as quality, for example, between in tennis, between your number one and your number 100. However, the issue is consistency consistent excellence. And that's a phrase we've used very often in our discussions about West Indies cricket. Aspiring to achieve a level of consistent excellence where silly mistakes like that don't happen, that you don't have a needless run out, which is totally within your control. You can talk about an unplayable delivery, like what Justin Graves had to face. You could talk about many other things. You could talk about the quality of that third wicket partnership with uh, Steve Smith and, and Cameron Green. But when you contribute through sheer thoughtlessness and carelessness to a needless dismissal, you, you really are widening those margins rather than narrowing the margins. Yeah, Faz, I just love when you use those uh, tennis analogies. Um, thank you very much. Ahead of uh, Davis Cup action tomorrow. But the second Monday international between West Indies and Australia will be Saturday night, 10.30 p.m., 11.30 Eastern Caribbean time. Um, any changes that you would make going into that one? I wouldn't necessarily make changes because I, I, I think 
this is a rebuilding process once again, Ricardo. And I, I think players need to be given a fair opportunity. Justin Graves was put in at the top of the order. Uh, he got an unplayable delivery. Do you drop him be, be, because of that? I, I think it's, it's reasonable to think that players should be given a fair enough opportunity to prove their worth if we're really going to come up with a solid nucleus that can build towards getting to the World Cup of 2027. Because again, we've just endured the humiliation, the two-time champions, the champions of the first two World Cups of not qualifying for a World Cup. So, so that in itself should be some sort of impetus for us to, those players who maybe missed out today, missed out on the chance to get a good score, missed out on the fact that they, they were ragged with their bowling, were all over the place, to really tighten up and really send the message that they're really keen and committed to be part of a World Cup team. Yeah, I completely agree with you, fans. although I do suspect that Azara Joseph um, may be brought back into the side for that second One Day International. Thanks, Faz. We'll chat again early next week. That will be after the second One Day and ahead of the third One Day International on Tuesday. Take care and have a great weekend. You too. Take care, everybody. All right, we go to a break.